In this video, I'll be working through the maths question you see on the screen here from the 2024 Cambridge A-Level Mechanics paper. If you're looking for a different question from this paper, or a different paper entirely, check out the description below for a link to playlists. And if you find this video or any of my videos useful and would like to help the channel out, if you are in a class group with other people sitting the exam, a share in that group would really help out. Failing that, a like, subscribe, or even a super thanks. In question four, they tell us a story about a car that's uh, driving up a hill. Um, they gives us lots of information about it. it not much of it's that important for A part one, but I'll go through it anyway. Uh, they tell us the weight of the car. Now the weight of the car is gonna give us a force downwards. They tell us the angle of the road is alpha and they tell us that sine alpha is equal to 0.12. Bit of an awkward way to tell us that but it does help out later in the question. Uh, they tell us the speed the car is going is 24 uh, meters per second. Uh, what else? Uh, there's a magnitude of resistance. So as the car drives up the road there's a resistive force against it. Now, Thankfully, we don't have to work this out. They give it to us, but not completely. They tell us this force is k v squared. So not a number, although they do give us a number in a moment. Um, it's an equation, like not important for part A. Uh, part B, we're gonna need to use that equation. Uh, the force down, I guess, what's the weight? It's uh, 1,400. So the force down would be 14,000 newtons. And then, um, yeah, most of that's not important for A part one. A part one simply asks us to find K, but they tell us that this force here is equal 480. So they just tell us 480 is equal K V squared. But they also told us V was here. So really uh, it's just K is equal 480, sorry, 480 over 24 squared. Put that into a calculator and I believe it's, yeah, there it is there. Five over six is the answer for K. Right, let's move on to the more interesting part of the question. Uh, part two, find the power of the car's engine. Because I missed the force here. Um, this, this diagram, the car would just fall down the hill. But they tell us it's going up the hill at a constant speed. That's important. That means the overall, uh, the overall acceleration is zero. Um, so yeah, something must be driving it up. That's the power of the engine. So that power of the engine is giving some force d. Uh, power is equal to force times uh, speed. So um, they tell us the power. Sorry, no, we need to find the power. I'm sorry. So to find the power, we know the velocity. We just need to find this force here. And uh, let's, let's get to that. Uh, the forces must be equal because the acceleration is equal. That's the only real trick here. The overall acceleration is zero. Overall force is F is equal MA. If A is zero, the overall force is zero. So let's just get all the forces going up the hill and all the forces going down. And they should equal zero. And uh, before we do that, the only hard bit is uh, this gravitational force. It's not going up or down the hill. It's going down, straight down. So we need to fix that. Let's uh, do that over here at this side. Um, 1, 000, uh, 14,000 I mean. This is going uh, up a hill that has angle 30. So this force can be moved into one that goes down the hill, like that, and one that goes straight into the ground. Uh, let's, uh, let's just grab um, a cloth. Uh, one that goes straight into the ground like this. Sorry, there we go. Uh, so this downward force, let's put 14 in just for the moment. So what is this? And we, we don't care about this one. We already know the friction. Uh, so what is this force here? It's, we just need to use a bit of trigonometry. If this is alpha, uh, this is 90 degrees, this is 90 degrees. This angle here is 90 minus alpha, which means this down here is alpha again. Uh, or, or if you rather, this up here is alpha. Whichever way you look at it, uh, we want this length. We know this length is 14,000. We know this angle. So this length here is just sine, sine of this angle multiplied by the hypotenuse. So uh, the one we're looking for, yeah, this length down here is just 14,000 times sine of alpha. And 
we know what sine of alpha is. Okay, add all these up. Uh, the force is going down the hill. So we've, we'll break this guy into one going down and one that doesn't matter going that way. The forces going down the hill are, uh, well, let's go, it's moving up the hill. Let's go up the hill first. Forces going up the hill are D. They must equal the forces going down the hill. Uh, the frictional force, don't need to use kV squared. They told us it's 480. And the gravitational force uh, we just found here is 14,000 multiplied by 0 0.12. Not sine alpha, we know sine alpha. Uh, put all that into a calculator, we find that D is equal to 2,160 Newtons. Uh, you will lose a mark, that's not the answer. They didn't ask you for the force, they asked you for the power. Power is equal the force multiplied by the velocity, uh, 24. And that's equal, uh, 51,840 watts. Or you could change that into kilowatts, 51.8 kilowatts. Uh, for part B, we move on to a new situation. The car is on a level road and he's moving along at uh, a constant speed again. So we don't know this speed, that's what they, <coughs> yeah, that's what they're asking us to find. We don't know the speed V. We do know the acceleration is zero though. So that's a, that's a bit of information. Um, the car, it has a driving force, just like last time, we call that D. Uh, but they tell us pretty much what the driving force is, because um, they tell us the power of the engine. And it will also have a frictional force. Again, they don't give us the number this time, but we still know it's K V squared. And I, that, that's really mainly the trick here. Uh, well, add in the fact that power is equal to the driving force here times the velocity here. Um, rearrange that, D is equal to P over V, or we know P, uh, it's 54,000. Don't forget the thousand. They give you in kilowatts, not in watts, divided by V. Um, that's all the forces on this, and we know it's in equilibrium. We know the forces to the right equal the forces to the left. So the ones going to the right are 54,000 divided by V. They must equal the ones going to the left. Uh, K, sorry, I wrote K in. We know what K is. That's five over eight, uh, six. Found out in part one. Uh, v squared. That's it. That's what we know from this situation. There's only one unknown here. It's just V. Rearrange this. Get all the Vs on the same side. V cubed. Uh, six times this divided by five. I'll have to <laughs> go to my uh, notes. Uh, 64,800. Uh, get the, the cube root of both sides, we get phi is equal 40.2. Um, the hard bit about this question was to realize that the frictional force, they gave it to you in this equation. Uh, the next difficult thing was, you didn't know anything here. Like you don't know the frictional force, you don't know the, the normal force. Uh, the secret was to get both of them as good as you could in, in as few variables as you can. Because you could write the force in the variable of velocity. You could write the frictional force in the variable of velocity. Once you can write everything in the same variable, uh, you should be able to get an answer out. In this case, they asked us for V, but often you might be able to get everything, it's very common to get everything in the variable time, and then just go back to the whatever you were looking for. Okay, enough waffling there. Uh, that's it for question four. If you have any follow-up questions, let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching and have a great day.